and uh, the live streaming is on. Can you check? Not yet started, sir. It's about to start. Waiting for your. Uh, we should look at it. Yeah, please. Uh, Master, can you start live streaming? Webmaster? Start it, sir. Tiwari ji, we can go ahead. Okay. Namaskar. And very good morning to today's uh, distinguished speaker. Professor R.S. Sharmaji, our former directors, Professor Harsh Gupta, Dr. Dimri, Dr. Uh, R.N. Singh, former director Niri, members of our research council, my dear colleagues from CSAR and GRI, and several students and faculty who have joined through the digital platform today. We all know that origin of the early crust still remains to be one of the top 10 geoscience issues which are, is being debated globally. We uh, know that the ter terrestrial planets may have had magma, oceans, comatite driven plate tectonics probably around 4 billion years. But still, how continent evolved over long geological history of around 4.5 billion years remains enigmatic. In this regard, we had uh, one very interesting uh, talk some time back about the secular variations of the, the plate tectonics and the other evolutionary processes. Today, we are going, going to have, have on the similar kind of the uh, discussion by one of the very uh, fascinating and imminent teacher who directly likes to interact with the uh, listeners and the students, but is uh, for uh, today's meeting, he would get connected with us on digital media through MS Team. Though he would have liked and we would have also enjoyed having him physically at CSAR and GRI, but we are missing this opportunity of directly talking to him on this very important topic, which is very uh, much in the discussion. And I understand he would take us particularly through the uh, Indian examples in reaching our knowledge of the different Britannic regions of India. With this, uh, we have a great privilege of having him and all of you together in, during this pandemic time. And we are also very happy that all, most of the people are keeping hale and hearty I take this opportunity to request through all of you to see that we all follow the COVID norms and convey through our younger generation, to our family members, to our relatives, that we see that we uh, remain uh, safe in this society. So with this, uh, it's over to you, uh, Dr. Gallor for the formal introduction of uh, Professor Sarma. Good 
mic is muted your mic is muted i'm sorry uh, thank you dr tiwari this is uh, diamond jubilee year for us uh, and, and we are going to complete 60 years uh, this year of existence of ngri and to celebrate this occasion i mean it's unfortunate that because of covid situation we are not our uh, all our celebrations are kind of online so uh, we are organizing lots of lectures so we have lectures almost on every month uh, we have we are trying to institute a fellowship uh, we 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 all we were also planning for exchange visits but but again because of covid uh, it may not happen this year we are planning to have uh, we have started building a rock museum and some exhibits in which uh, different instruments different uh, methods of geophysical exploration are going to be uh, exposed to, are, are going to be uh, going to be uh, exhibited uh, we are also have going to have some theme based books uh we are going to have a few few volumes uh in few papers in a, in a special volume in journals where we are trying to highlight the achievement of ngri of past 60 years so that's that's all about uh uh golden uh, diamond jubilee year of uh, ngri now um i like to introduce uh professor nam swarup sharma ji uh he received his msc uh when those who are in ngri right now in service none of us were actually born uh, so he 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 did his msc in 1960 um uh, from bsu then he became a faculty there uh thereafter he did his uh, dfil from university of basel and his thesis was considered as outstanding i mean this is one of the rarest distinction uh at university of basel after his tenure at bsu in 1997 uh again uh, many of us had not not joined ngri but, but, but by the time he worked as csir emeritus uh, scientist and then he became insa senior scientist at university of rajasthan uh right now he is based in uh, jaipur uh, professor sharma started his career uh, in metamorphic pathology he is known for uh, he is known for 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 his work on tectonics and Uh, and and aravalli mountain belt uh, tectomorph morphic evolution he has uh, he has authored a book on cretons and fold belts of india which i have a personal copy of that uh, and i have read that book maybe twice or thrice especially after um, several earthquakes started occurring in uh, occurred in uh, last year in delhi region uh, so other than his expertise in uh, all these subjects uh he is known for his original and indigenous thinking i'm deeply impressed by the way he delivers his lectures i mean that that leaves a great impression on anybody who is who listens to his that lecture his intensity his passion his and his involvement and his animated discussion you know uh, during the lecture is absolutely infectious so with these words uh, i welcome professor ram sharma uh, thank you sir uh, and for accepting our invitation for this professor ram sharma please hello my greetings to the and the audience congratulations to the scientists of the world class national geophysical research institute at hilapa for celebrating the diamond jubilee of ngri which has done pioneering research for the understanding of structure and dynamics of the earth in different fields of earth sciences I am much delighted to be part of this celebration, and thank the director B M Thiwari and all scientists of NGRI for this honor to me. The topic of my talk is is origin of early crust and evolutionary sequence of upper mantle layers. I. about this i requested professor harsh gupta if he could give me some references but to his knowledge and to my knowledge also there was no work like this by anybody anywhere so this topic is very interesting because early crust occurs in the nucleus of cratons which are most enduring features 
at the surface of the earth. They hold the keys to understand the evolution of early cars. They host key mineral commodities. Ketones are underlain by mental layers about which we'll talk it. The first lithos pair, these, these, oh, okay, wait, wait. So this is the, the crust is about 10 kilometers in the oceanic and 35 kilometer continent. It could be it could be rather more in some places. We need explanation for that, but it's the average one. Then the mental is the periodotite, it is ultra mephic rock, the first right mineral, the pyroxenes and garnets, the some diamond, etc. etc. The, uh, the upper mental part has lithosphere, which is about 70 to 120 kilometers in the oceanic and continental part. A low velocity layer then below that, which is could be zero, but average is 60 to 100 kilometers. At some regions, it could be zero even. But asthenosphere below that is 200 kilometers about thickness. Then comes the transition zone, of which the upper layer is uh, 400 kilometer discontinuity, in which olivine goes to spinal structure, not spinal. Then gives the 660 kilometer discontinuity, where the spinal structure goes to perovskite structure. And in this, all the silicon in the minerals, in silicate minerals, is a six-fold coordination. Then comes the lower ventral, which has more gradual velocity increase. All these layers were detected by seismologists, by geophysicists. My interest was how, what is the sequence of these formation? And that prompted me to take up this lecture uh, on the occasion of this gold diamond jubilee celebration of NGRI. Okay, so now, I, now in this layered structure of the earth, one thing to the audience, I must say, also to the student particularly, in the nature, most of the things are in layer, whether it's a human being or whether it, you, you see anything, it's almost layered. So earth is also a layered structure. But the question is that, how and when did early continental crust evolve? And did all layers of the upper mantle evolve simultaneously or sequentially? That is the type, that is the problem that I'm going to speak today. The, 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 the base or consideration is composition of the layers. So that with the, okay, so the early crust, first I will take about the early crust. Its origin is linked with the upper mental evolution. Planet Earth cooled with time. It was in gaseous state, then came to the fluid state, then molten and solid state. Now, when it was hot Earth, it gravitationally differentiated into iron core, which is up for liquid and, and, and solid, don't worry about that, and a single silicate protomantle, single silicate protomantle. So this is the, the one which is there. There were no crust before that. Now, there is a supposition here by scientists that the early Earth had magma ocean with convection currents. That is the supposition because in science, we have to suppose things, particularly in the earth science, when we, have, we were not born when things happened there. Next one. So the proto mantle further differentiated by whole mantle convection into upper mantle and lower mantle. So you can see here in the diagram material also. Now, in the cooling proto mantle, the first layer formed was lithosphere, the, which we called mantle lid, similar to the creamy layer on the hot milk. So, lithosphere is forstride, OPX, garnet, etc. is the coldest part of the metal is acted as a thermal boundary and there are no convection currents. Very interesting story. So the, the lithosphere is the first part that formed in the sequence. Next one. Now, when was the early crust formed? Which is very fast formed the mental. Since the proto mental contained silicon, iron, magnesium, calcium and other lithophile elements, the early crust evolved at the same time 
as the lithosphere from the convecting peritoneal mantle. Here I want to tell this one little thing. It's a crust which does not crust and the, 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 the lithosphere. They are very friendly couple, I should say. Crust does not allow the mantle to sink. It always keeps it floating. This is very interesting thing. So the, the crust uh, pays its homage to the mental the lithosphere for formation in the in the evolution. Next one. How, this is a postulated mechanism of early crust. How the early crust might have formed. So convection currents in the mental since 4.6 zigano, basaltic layer war on the convecting upwells. Okay, here. Then they remelted over convecting sinks and develop elongated volcanic chains, all volcanic chains. These volcanic chains, they join by drif drifting and they form the andesitic crust, which is the Eoarchean crust. Below the andesite, on the, on the plutonic side, you will have the tonalitic granitic type rock under that. And this was after the Eoarchean crust, other things happened with the rifting and then the plate tectonics and subduction, etc. The EO crust or, or the early crust had high sodium upon potassium ratio and also lanthanum and deuterium ratio. Low lutetium and hafnium and samarium and neodymium ratios. This implies the lower degrees of partial melting. The crustal melt moved from deeper levels and introduced as oval bodies in the already transformed mappy crust to form the green granite stone belt. Here you can see here interesting thing. This is the Pilbara terrain. I have visited this one and I saw these oval bodies, granitic bodies. So this is a field photograph that the granite has come as oval body and or, 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 or elliptical body and that these are the mafic rocks all around it. So this is a very interesting thing, but all are, both are of the more or less same age, the granite as well as the mafic rock. Now, the Australians, they say, the model that greenstone, granite, this, this dense mafic crust, which was there to produce the, the melt, sink into the, to form the keel. This is the keel. While this light granite melts rise upward, this is the model of the Australian people, and this is a diagram from them. I think this way. Next one. In Anartaxis, because the partial melting, melts forms as patches and droplets at different places in the parent rock. Subsequently, it collects and then rises upward. The rest it, the subcrustal melter could not sink to form keels as the melt had moved up already. So this is the concept that I want to propose here. The restite or residue layer became the subcontinental lithosphere with nearly planar bounding surfaces, the top surface being the more discontinuity. Now question, next problem comes. How were deeper layers LVZ Estensphere, etc., evolved. Assumption here beneath the lithosphere, because the lithosphere was already formed and crust was already formed, upper mantle became solid because of millions of years of cooling in the formation of lithosphere and degassing of water. Ocean was also formed. Presence of unmelted forced ride in the deep mantle as revealed by seismicity. Is the proof of the above assumption. Okay, then this solid, what happened to the solid? Next one. The solid mental at depth near 400 km, LBZ, but underwent partial melting, facilitated by water, released from mental minerals, which are those ringwoodite and wartzelite. They have O and H in ionic form, or OH, you can think it. So they release that one. And that facilitated melting of, of the of the of the uh, of the perovertite uh, mantle at 400 kilometers. Now this melt, being lighter 
moved upward and stay below the already formed lithosphere. This melt formed the low velocity zone, a highly conductive layer. Asthenosphere is the restite. The restite residual part in partial melting process collectively form nearly homogeneous layer which is asthenosphere. It is depleted in incompatible elements because we have, they go into the LBZ and the asthenosphere composed of heavier elements, magnesium, iron is a chemical boundary within the mantle. So asthenosphere is a chemical boundary, lithosphere is a mechanical boundary. Let's go. Also chemical. Now origin of 410 km discontinuity, upper layer of transition zone, the collective pressure of the crust, the continental lithosphere, the LBZ and asthenosphere, they resulted into the solid state transformation of the olivine to spinel structure at a depth of 410 km detected by seismologists. The deeper layer of transition zone, the density increase is 8% here. By this transformation, the density increased by 8%. The 606 km discontinuity was also formed when the five layers exerted the pressure. The crust, the lithosphere, the LBZ, the asthenosphere, the 410 km discontinuity. This gave rise to 660 km state, solid state transformation, where spinel structure olivine changed to perovskite structure, in which silicon is in six fold coordination and the density increase here is 10%. So it's all the time the density was increasing. So this is the phase transformation in the Earth's mantle given the P velocity, and people, you are all familiar with that. Extra. The mark comes up, mind mark. The basaltic magma giving rise to different upper mental layers because the basaltic magma, which was generated by decompression melt, it was not generated by mental plume or by plate tectonics. This is the, this is the concept that I am proposing it myself. This is not given in any textbook, but I am putting it here in front of the audience. Next one. Because plume hypothesis says plume is, arises from the uh, mental boundary, it goes up, but it stays here, somewhere. Where it is, let us see here. This is because plume hypothesis is not valid because plume hypothesis required, the plume had required an already existing refractory layer against which it will stop. And this is refractory layer is the asthenosphere against which it would melt, but this layer originated very late. So the plume hypothesis is not acceptable in the formation of this. Okay, next one. In the in the later period, of course, in the in the in the, in the uh, arcane and later period, surely plume was there. The hot spots are there, no problem. But it was not early. Next one. Plate tectonics was also possibly not operative then. The reason is, the EO arcane lithosphere was thin and more buoyant, causing the plate tectonics difficult to operate. Early, early crust, I'm talking about the early crust. Signatures of the plate tectonics during EO arcane, more than 3.8 Tiganu, are sparse from rock record, since all older rocks are highly deformed. So all these older rocks, EO arcane crust, 3.8 and older, is found in Pilbara Caton, Akasta Nice, Iswa Formation, and few other places, not in India, unfortunately. These are the places I have visited, I think, almost all these places during my see, see, attending conferences. So these are the places where you get the oldest rock. Next one. Then what happened to this early crust? They consume by vigorous asthenosphere convection, eroded away, destroyed by intense meteoritic bombardment in early time. So and your crust is scantily survived. The TTG ices of 3.6 to 3.4 Giganu and younger are thicker than EO arcane crust, are found in several continental cratonic areas including India. About it, I will talk. The Arcan crust contains two distinct lithologies, basalt 
of which is now metam metamorphosed and called greenstone. And the felsic rock, tonalite, tronzimide, granite, which we call TTG, they are of, both these rocks are often layered. In archean terrains are now seen as deformed granite greenstone beds in different continents of the world because of superimposition of the later orogeny. You can't have the, the that, that type of thing which we saw in the early time. This is the typical granite greenstone outcrop. So granitic rock and greenstone. That this is the typical whether you see in southern India or in other places of India. So, so. Now Orchid TTG rocks can be evolved from basaltic magma either by partial melting which we call anatexis, of solidified early basalt or magmatic differentiation of early basalt. So magmatic differentiation, igneous process, and this is partial melting, metamorphic process. Okay. These, now we can see here, equilibrium crystallization gives rock of the same composition. The students should know this one. Fractional crystallization or fractional melting give rise to rocks of different composition. You can see here, magmatic differentiation, all different types of rocks are formed in this, but in equilibrium, same, same composition, but it never happens. And in artaxis, the solid rocks undergoes melting. So here, diopside, phosphoride, and cetine. This is the ultramafic rock whose melting process I, can, I have shown here in the lab, but I don't have time, only to tell you that the anartaxis does not spread over long temperature interval very short temperature interval, everything melts in that period, next time. This is the diagram, of course I prepared it by hand and made by my friend, students this way, very interesting. So this is the solid rock, this melts and you have unmelted part. The melt part crystallizes as a felsic rock. In the magma, the magma melt start fractional crystallization and you are both see at both time you are having the solid rock and also the melt you can distinguish them only by chemistry geochemistry but it is the early crust is formed only by partial melting of the upper melt plate tectonics is believed to have operated much later that is why younger than three and six old crust formed by plate tectonics. We say it and we apply the plate tectonics here. This is the diagram. So early time there was no, no plate tectonics and then there was plate tectonics. But mind you, in plate tectonics here, the whole belt is formed only on the colliding side, not on converging side, not on other side. Remember this part. Next one. Because I'll come to that part. This arcane crust was thickened. Arcane crust by men, addition of mantle plume at the base, addition of subducted oceanic plate at the crust, and addition of island arc or continental fragments. This is, of course, I have compiled it for the students uh, who I teach, and this is very interesting. This, I think people should have this diagram so that they for all the time they don't have to run around for this one. So mechanism crystal thickening is by horizontal accretion. So this is the crust, this is the arc, and this arc continent suturing is now making thickening, horizontal thickening is taking place. Two direction subduction, one on this side, on other on this side, they can also thicken the crust. Then one direction subduction and accretion, they both are having same same direction, and then you are having the addition. And sediment deposition is also, when drifting takes place, sediment deposition also adds to the crust thickness, horizontal. Vertical thickness by underplating basaltic magma or granitic magma, crustal imbrigation. This is a crust, it got imbrigated. Under thrusting, you can see here that the by thrust one over the other, same thing. A structural duplication, a, a rock. Is the rock is there, it's folded, and you are having thickening of the crust. Hot spot and other volcanic activity, you can see that. So this is how the arcane crust got thickened at different times. These are the proterozoic 
Pillar Jake, four belts, and arcane kratons. Kratons of the Indian shield. Five, ten minutes I will take uh, now, if, if, if you permit me. Just uh, kratons of the Indian shield is a big, big, big problem. I, I, I have written in my book also. Problem pertaining to the assembly or fragmentation. Whether the different kratons, they came from far off places or, and then got assembled, or it was one continental mass that fragmented and gave rise to these different kratons of the Indian shield. Here we must know the geological processes very nicely, is it for also for the resources, and the geochemistry we should also be understood by us because it redistributes the minerals and elements also for the nation's economy. And fundamental to this notion is, is for young generation, a strong geological understanding at all levels of education and training. This is what I feel and I try to learn different subjects by for, for understanding the earth science nicely. Thank you. Here are the kratons of the Indian shield. Sir, this is a this is a map after your 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 scientist at NGRI. I feel proud of it. He was my student also, DC Mishra. Aravli Kraton, Bundel Kran Kraton, then Singbum Kraton, Basar Kraton, Dahwa Kraton. Uh, one or two Kratons, he did not put it because they were they were disputed by many scientists. Anyway, now if you see these different Kratons, they are separated by gravens, by rifts. Mahanadi, Vadavri, all these rifts also. This is the, the, the Vindhyan rifts. Now, still do you by seeing these ones, and not only this one, each each Kraton is margined by two fold belts, one on west side, other is southeast side. Good. Next one. Now my con the controversy came up and I think my young generation should not uh, go for this uh, religious type duplicacy where two religions can go simultaneously. In science, only one thought goes ahead. The other thought is rejected. So question is that, are these ketones the result of accretion of separate continental fragments or a single large continental fragment gave rise to these ketones? Interesting. So this is what I said, that you are having the, the, the full belt on both sides, on this side, that side. So each ketone is flanked along the two opposite margins by prototypic fold belts. Great tectonic generate fold only on one side. In Rajasthan, Dr. Gulati, see, two overlapping protozoic fold belts on one side and older belt along opposite margins of the Aravali Kraton. See now, this is the Aravali fold belt, this is the Kraton, this color, greenish, this greenish. And this purple is the Aravali fold belt, overlapped by Delhi fold belt one fold belt over the other without anything and then this kraton is also having two fold belts of the same age on both sides which plate tectonics can explain this one i really fail to understand either either we have not clear understanding of the plate tectonic process plate tectonic process does not allow the kraton to remain at the same place not only that you have full belts only on one side. So two protrusive four belts along the same margin of the kraton, one four belt each on two opposite margins of the kraton, rule out two times drifting of the same kraton. Plate tectonics not applicable. Is a very funny argument was given by Americans. To my young, young friends, I must say it. Don't take any idea for granted. Think it opposite to that. Then only we will advance in science. So B, the F, C, C, the, 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 the author says it, that F, since uh, that, that the, because the ketones have no, no similarity and you can't correlate them, so the, the, the whole ketones have come from far off places. But absence of correlations of ketones is no argument for accretion model because Ketones have unequal erosion, they have different grades of metamorphism, they have possible vertical tectonics, 
They have dissimilar igneous activity in respect of phases and ages and different proportions of greenstone and TTG rises in each ground. So how can you think this argument? Next one. <clears throat> argument continues. Because I take this opportunity because I don't find any every time to tell this student because this is an opportunity of Diamond Jubilee and I'm taking it. In various supercontinent reconstructions, Indian shield is always shown in triangular shape with all interior catonic blocks intact. Short protoloid fold belts within Indian shield. Unlike the plate tectonically evolved long, elongated belts like Himalaya or Andes, that suggests that these four belts have originated by encephalic orogenesis. This is my model. I have given it for Rajasthan, and I think people should think about it because plate tectonics is not doesn't seem to be applicable here. And this is encephalic orogenesis involves limited movement of tectonic blocks in both rifting and in convergence. So it is a later formed grabbance between the ketones that show them separate crystal blocks. The model of four or drift of ketones is rejected. I'm using this word so that the student should be bold enough to, to criticize me or criticize the, this model. In preference to that alternative model involving fragmentation of a single continental mass. Very interesting. See now these two the T2 code these two ketones were together. They were separated, Bundelkhand Kraton and Aravli Kraton. They were separated later in your Proterozoic by, by the position of the Vindhyan. Here I have a very, very a, 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 a casual remark on that one. If this is the neo proterozoic belt, how can the Bundelkhand granite uh, subducted or Bastar granite subducted uh, and to form the CITZ, Central Indian Tectonic Zone. So this, this is also a very questionable problem in Indian geology. So Rajasthan Kraton formed 3.3, Mundil Kraton Granite Massif formed 3.25, more or the same. Their geochronological and geochemical similarities possibly indicate that these Kraton blocks were offshoot, my model, published also, that from the Singh Boom granite of, of SE1. Both BK and BGC keratonic blocks were intruded by 2.5 old granites. And BK and BGC were separated in neo protrusion drifting by Bindyan sediments. And I give you the last slide to summarize the ketones of the Indian sheet. The Harwa keton, the Pastar keton, the Singh Boom keton, Bended Nice Complex, or, or, or the Arabli keton, and Bundel keton. Sir, these two ketones, the Dharva, big lead feldspar age 3.8, and OMTG Samarium Diodium by Basu also gave 3.8, which was later questioned. So you are having an Isaac and Mephic rock, greenstone and ice, which we call panels on ice. Here in Bastar, you are having Amgaon, Amgaon or Tirodin ice. Here you are having the the OMTG, older metamorphic tone like nice. Then there were deposition here of Sargur, here of Sukma, and here of OMG. I'm sorry, this T has wrongly, wrongly printed here. OMG, older metamorphic group, supracrystals. Then here you see what happened. The, 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 the skeleton was surrounded by ocean, and then the volcanic eruption took place. The ferrous became ferric, and you are having iron ore deposits margining the sink boom on the north and west side. Here, there was no. Here, then, you are having Dharwar, you are having the greenstone, younger greenstone, an interesting part. Nothing happened here in the Bastar, and it, here it was continuously volcanic, volcanic chai pasa formation, dalma formation, no granitic rock here. But here you are having one granitic, one granitic, all granitic rocks at 2.5 in Dharwar, in the Bastar, in the Bended, and now is here. Why I said it that this might have come, this this granite of 
sing boom up number two may have gone to form these two granitic or nisic craton what we say here is my my proposition which are already published here and now this is the history of five cratonic blocks if you give it permission i read it otherwise i complete my talk should i please go ahead sir okay the dharva craton the bastar craton and sing boom craton were united with 3.6 to 3.4 giga nisens sing boom craton on three sides had oceanic ridge which extruded mafic ultra mafic lavas in water and oxidized to form bia bended iron formation now occurring as iog iron ore group at the continental margin catonic rifting allowed deposition of the omg on sc sargur on dharma and sukma on bastar metamorphism of omg or an ataxis of omtg basement generated granitic rocks that intruded into the sing boom granite 1 2 3 while further north and northwest protolith of bgc and bk bandar bastar the bundelkhand defining large craton north of sandla lower media all these cratonic blocks were intruded by 2.5 giga on old art material from dharwa craton present position of the cratons is the result of protrusion rifting and orogenesis and with this i complete my lecture thank you very much for your kind attention <coughs> sir with your permission can we have few questions yes i would like definitely so uh, let me uh, start with uh, uh, my uh, ignorance about uh, uh, believe that uh, we can't evolve uh, uh, we cannot invoke the hypothesis of the plate tectonics for the accretion of the uh, continental blocks in the india are the cratons uh, majority of the uh, hypothesis which are now being postulated based on uh, the geochronological data and uh, even in the southern uh, india in dharwar tetan we come across uh, several papers which talks of uh, particularly the new suture zones are even uh, small cratonic blocks which might have uh, accreted or uh, came together uh, because of the plate tectonics around 3.5 to 3 billion years ago so uh, what is uh, the uh, best geological marker of the geological experiment which can uh, resolve this issue very nice so uh, we we have been uh, trying we uh, worked uh, uh, and we had a brainstorming session and i am very uh, uh, fortunate today that professor singhvi who uh, chairs the uh, committee of uh, MOER Geoscience uh, Committee. We had brainstorming and we came across uh, several kind of the hypotheses, particularly for the Dharwar Craton and uh, Southern Dolomitic Terrain, also the uh, Bastar and the Singbo together. So, majority of the uh, pro proposers of the uh, new uh, projects, they had hypotheses. so in that uh, many blocks of the cratons they accreted they came together through the plate tectonic processes and uh, some of the evidences which were shown from the uh, geophysical data of dipping reflectors are uh, the conductive anomaly from one block and having the different uh, physical property even in the archean uh, cratonic regions have been uh, cited for the uh, two uh, different identities of the cratons so uh, 
uh, we would like to listen from your experience. Sir. Really, very nice question, and I think I should give you the answer to this one. You know, the in tech tectonics, the continents come apart by three things: either asthenosphere upwelling, or asthenosphere convection current, or mental convection current. Now, if they say, is it large mental convection, then they go very far apart. They don't come back. If the, if the, the, the separation is by mental convection, then mental convection, the, the whole mental convection, it takes the, 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 the ketones very far apart. They never come back again to unite or make a mountain. They will make mountain somewhere else. This is one thing. And if it is a, a small one, for example, if the plume is there, the asthenosphere plume, then it is a, a, a different story. So what happened? The, the ketones, they go apart. Only slightly, the, 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 the crust becomes thin. And then the, the lithosphere also becomes thin. It, it breaks. And the, uh, the, the, the LBZ, or, um, or, or, or you can say, the asthenosphere material comes up in form of basaltic lava. But this stops there itself. It doesn't go beyond. But it can come back. Again, when the load of the sediment is more, the, 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 the stress pressure by the plume is degenerated, then they can come back again and collide and make a mountain. So this is the encialic orogenesis. But in the plate tectonics, if something goes away, then it goes away. It should not come back. If it's a really plate tectonics, it's ticto sensor. If it is, if, you see, we are making two things. We are making first an, 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 a rift basin, then we close it by the same kraton. This is the mistake that we are doing it. So this this problem has to be has to be understood properly. You can't make see sea, sea floor is spreading is afterwards. Otherwise, the the small basin is formed, rift basin is formed. The continent is itself. If the if the, the rifting is not very far away, if it is very far away, then sea floor is spreading occurs and subduction takes place. That is the plate tectonics. But if we, if the, the if the if the the asthenosphere plume or, or, or asthenosphere upwelling or you can say if they are the root cause for uh, rifting this, then it does not go very far away. So people have to prove this one, whether it was a a a, in, a skeletonic basement within the kraton, whether whether the the the, the, the rifting was with the with the with the kratonic. Uh, a composition intact, or it was oceanic ocean floor. We don't have any evidence of the ocean floor spreading in any of these uh, Indian Indian ketones. That is a big problem. Sir. Your question is very very thought provoking, but I have a, a problem. We don't have any no blue cyst, nothing like this one. We say back arc, but back arc is formed when the when the when the subduction goes back backward. Then only back backward form. And all things happen on the oh, uh, hanging wall side. All igneous activity, everything happens on the hanging wall side, not on the foot wall side. So these things have to be very clearly understood by any person who opposes or accepts a model. Uh, uh, for the formation of the uh, Archean basins or the uh, Proterozoic basins, yeah. Uh, also, uh, we do not have uh, very clear evidence of the uh, rifting. Uh, probably uh, many of the places they talk of uh, the uh, um, kind of the volcanism which are uh, more associated with the convergence margin rather than the rifting processes. So, uh, how do you see them? Uh, but it's another good question. Of course, surely. I have to say one thing. You know, the volcanism occurs even without plate tectonic movement or any, without even separation of the continent. You can see the volcanoes everywhere taking place, even today. It's all subterranean activity. This is the, the fluctuation in the asthenosphere that give rise to the volcanoes and fracturing of the lithosphere. Problem comes up here that when sub subduction occurs, then the deeper mental part must come up. We have no evidence of this one. We have found only Grandy Crocs as an arc, you can say. Mostly it's Grandy Rocks which have, which have come up. And we can say that this is the arc. But the compositionally, 
they are not that way. They could be subcrustal melt which have come up. For example, Manali hyrite, it is a melt of the of the of the Arunpura granite. It is not come from the from 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 the mantle. It's a rhyolite because when a granite melts, of course, at at, at this shallow depth, granite becomes rhyolite. So, the, and now we, if you say that that the rhyolite has come from very deep level, that are uh, not acceptable. To me. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think there may be several others, so I, I will. I have to answer. Thank you. And take up that. Okay, uh, hello, please. Yeah, I mean, anybody on MS team wants to ask anything? Uh, I see Harshupta sir, Singhvi sir, uh, Arun Singh sir. Harshupta uh, sir wants to ask something. Sir, go ahead, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment uh, Ram Sharma for a wonderful talk. I'm um, listening to him after a long time and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, just uh, some issues. You see, uh, he very rightly said that uh, we have in our mind a triangular frame of Indian shield moving all the time and it could not be the same all the time. That is very true. Just about 15 or 20,000 years ago, the sea, the, the land extended almost up to 200 kilometers towards west. So there's no way India would look like what it is being portrayed to be. Another question that uh, is a very funny question in mind, that why we think of only five cratons here? Could there be a missing craton? Could no, no. we miss any craton anywhere? Very, very good question. Very good question, to me, uh, We have a huge gravity anomaly south of India. Could that be a signature of a lost craton? I think it's a very, very, very good question. I said, I, I, I concur with you. Actually, we, we are, we are not very critical about our geological uh, uh, studies or whatever you say. Because uh, if, if you go by the ages, then you, 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 you go for some other model. But if you go by geology and the rock types, then you have another model problem with this one. Because for example, yes, I, I mean, everybody is very well known, but 4.2 billion year, uh, uh, zircon was found in the, in the Jack Hills, uh, in, in the complex of Australia. Now people say it, people say it, that there was ocean because it was ero eroded away. Now conclusion such as this may be for or maybe far reaching. So there are many people who criticize such type of uh, propositions by many people. So in India also we have to be we have to question every statement made by any person publishing a paper. Why? Unless that habit is not coming in our mind, in our temperament, our science will be delayed in, in, in going ahead. My feeling. Well, thank you very much for your you know, responding to it. Actually, there is an opportunity in the deep time digital earth on which uh, a lot of work is being carried out. There is a unified approach to get deeper into time and then try to restructure yeah. the movement of continents and what they look like. I was like what we see is very, very recent. And uh, our knowledge of the past uh, is very fragmented. I'm very hopeful that after proper implementation of this deep time digital earth, we have, I think lots of us are working, there will be some light shed onto some of these mysterious. Thanks a lot once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Singh, sir? Or Singh, sir? Well, uh, it, it was a very fascinating talk. Uh, I'm very happy to hear Professor Sharma again and again. Um, uh, while listening to him, the thought which was occurring, uh, going through my mind was that um, he made this. You made a statement that uh, nature prefers layered structure. Everything yeah. is layered. Uh, a corollary of that, uh, which was I saw in your talk, was that. Everything was being transferred radially in the earth. 
uh, you use the pressure temperature for phase transformation then you used uh, that for generating melt and bringing melt only radially now if i if we look uh, how earth has been cooling now if the process of cooling has been that there, there has been convection going on in the earth's interior yeah then everything can't be radial it is quite possible unless the upper lid is uh, so strong that uh, convection is not able to break it so um, i have a problem of explaining how does earth cool if thermodynamic process is radially only you yeah, apply okay. thermodynamics yeah so the question was that uh, do you think that uh, some kind of global convection takes place in the earth's interior or not are you are you don't need it sir this is again a a a a, a is a dispute whether it is whole mental or 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 the the, the, the top layer mental uh, depends upon which process helps you just like dual uh, light light theory is there of the the, the, the wave and the particle theory similarly we have to also take the whether the the, the convection was limited or it was a whole mental convection so this depends upon which what explains what i don't think it is all the time the whole mental convection it could be also a, a, a top layer convection in the asthenosphere uh, uh, region or in the permanent region may not be completely whole full mental my, i i feel this way thank you for that that you you you, you drew my attention but i this is not actually this beyond my by my training or beyond my because you 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 were student not my teacher otherwise i would have learned much more thermodynamics from you dear Uh, thank you very much sir uh, for your kind words okay. if there no more questions on the from the panel then i can take up questions from uh, other uh, platforms for example youtube i have several questions sir uh, i'll pick up from uh, other platforms for example youtube uh, so there is uh, yes but, but before i do that i i i must confess that those who are uh, students and especially involved in uh, in in uh, convergence plate margins uh, for them plate tectonics is everything you know so so they, they they tend to focus more on plate tectonics rather than what happened before plate tectonics started operating so in that sense this lecture is 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 fantastic i i i thoroughly enjoyed it so i'll take up some questions from uh, other platform there is one question from uh, if i can pronounce his name correctly archeshman uh, so he says so what was the major controlling process in formation of ttgs uh, and at axis of fractional crystallization and based on what geochemical evidence we can say that well if it if if it is a magmatic differentiation then you get the whole series of rocks okay if it is a partial melting which occurs in a limited temperature interval then you have one almost one composition so is a ttg is, is slightly you know a more or less one composition so it is a is a partial melt that is responsible for all these rocks that were formed okay i am sure you are happy with that answer uh he adds uh, one more question here yes if please it, if it is possible that uh, mantle convection was active and with sufficient elastic thickness in archean why plate tectonics could not be active mm -hmm. sir it's a, it's a difficult question for me here mm -hmm. I, i i i i say no i can't answer this question uh, so i will i will uh, achishman i i will give you his email address so i uh, you can correspond with him for more details i have another question from center of earth oceanic ocean atmospheric sciences as the indian subcontinent was part of the indian gondwana land can we assume that it was a single craton for india australia and antarctic land masses yeah you can see it from the very beginning all of <laughs> all of our cratons are of the same age more or less okay Anand Pandey from NGRI he is asking why recurrent rifting 
uh, that is 1.8 to 1 GA and good one on dispersal without complete dispersal of a uh, cratonic block across Indian craton. Is it just unequal isostatic readjustment of these cratonic blocks? Anybody's guess? It's anybody's guess. I can't. I can't say anything. Definite answer for that. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Prakash from NGRI. He's asking uh, if all cratons were united, then why do we get different geophysical signatures, structure, and composition? Ah, that's that's a good question. Yeah. You know, each very nice one. Each terrain has a different story underneath. Okay. So this is responsible for all this. You have seen, I showed you the, a compilation of all the cratons. You saw somewhere you have more basic material, somewhere you are not, you don't have any basic material. So this is the story of subterranean activity differing at different places, even within a small, a small 2000 or 2500 kilometers uh, uh, area. So this is a, a story and it's a protected period from from 3.3 uh, 3 to till today many many must have taken place many um, in india was also moving i mean all these things were there so the different uh, different times different activities are responsible for giving the different signature of the subcontinental material okay uh, one more uh, yeah please yeah uh, Sunil, Sunil Loy from NGRI is asking, do you expect earlier crust to be still preserved at the base of lower mantle? If yes, then can we expect them to, to, be, to, to, to observe at, at the hot spot? No, hot spot is not. You see, you see please understand hot See, we have to have two very clear things. Hot spot is related to the plume. Hot spot is related to the plume. It doesn't come as such. So, but there's a plume, and plume came only after the asteroid had formed. Mm -hmm. So, not in the early time; it's a later time, mind you, because plume must have a stopping, a stopping layer, and that is the asteroid only a refractory layer. It, it can't, it can't occur everywhere. I agree. Uh, sir, Arpita has got uh, one or two questions. Yeah. Uh, Arpita says that. Uh, she, this question is regarding formation of LVZ, global astronomy. So she's saying uh, in the astronosphere, delta Q is zero. So if there was no tectonic processes, yeah. then how the heat was released leading to the formation of relatively cooled LVZ? Arpita, ask this question to uh, Aran Singh. He will be the right man to answer it. Sorry for that, but I must accept it, that it is related to advanced thermodynamics in which I am not very expert. Okay, Arpita, you can you can correspond with Aran Singh sir. Um, Arpita also adds that with lower pressure compared to its upper, okay, it's continuation of the of the little one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have Ram Mohan who is who is one of the organizer of this. He is asking why 2.5 GA crust is not preserved in Singh Boom Craton. If all ketones have gen uh, uh, have genetic uh, lineages, why 2.5 GA crust is not preserved in Singbom keton if all ketones have genetic lineage? No, no. This is, see, they were, they were, they, they were, you know, when was it, when they were separated? You know that the separation was before 2.5. We have we we so so it is it is that part, and then you know even. Being together, they, their response to the, uh, uh, the, the sub, uh, sub lithospheric activity is different. Even you can see here, even even nature also, you know, different different rocks are found in the vicinity. Why so? It is because because of this, this variation. Somewhere the, 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 the rocks go horizontal and then intrude. Somewhere the rocks go vertical then intrude. So you have a variety of of, of expressions of these things. Uh, there, is, there is probably one last question from Ajay Kumar Sahu. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, what is the relationship between the age and the strength of a criton? <laughs> That's uh, always al always asked, you know, in, in terms of convergence. Think, are, they, are, are they getting 
weaker with age, which is resulting in intraplate earthquakes? Yeah, no, oh, of course. It, 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 one thing very interesting, I must say. It. The earthquakes, they come at the interface of two rock formations. Mind you, most of them are, they generate at the interface of two rock formations. Suppose a, a, a quartzite and a basalt, they are in contact. Then their rheology, their behavior to the stresses will be different and they are responsible for it's not only the, the fracture, it's not only the, 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 the fracture only, it is all, also the interface of the two different composition that give rise to the uh, mm -hmm. earthquakes. So, uh, the, the question is, is that way, like that. Uh, I think I don't have any other question. Uh, Ramwan, do you, do you think that uh, webmaster is typing? I do not know whether this one, some more question is coming, otherwise, uh, otherwise we can, I think we can have, the questions are over now. Ramwan, uh, can you? Can you take one over? last question? One, one yeah. more question, sir. Uh, Ramanand and the other. Yeah. Uh, in general, why mantle plume heats always below continent? Where will it go? Not only it's also there in the oceanic crust also. You see the, the lavas. You see uh, the, the, the heat is all is spread all over. It's not only but you are on the continent who so are feeling it. If you are on the ocean floor, so you will also feel there. It's not, it's not this way. Uh, I mean, this is a question, but it is a, you have to think it differently. Ramon, uh, please take over now. Yes, sir. Uh, on behalf of uh, DJYC, I thank Professor Arash R. Sharma for accepting our request to deliver the sixth Diamond Jubilee lecture at this challenging times. Professor Sharma has enlightened us relating the crustal evolution uh, related to the mantle depression with the analogy of couple. Very nice illustration of conventional dome and keel structures across the globe to, de to depict the globe uh, granite greenstone sequences during the Archean. Again, is the is non-conventional approach of coalescing the mantle toplets in the restrictive model. And also proposing the decompression melting of the upper mantle. I think this is means a very means uh, exciting uh, uh, the, means hypothesis to explain the differentiation of the mantle. And also, and now this is the 52 years of uh, this plate tectonics theory as proposed. Now still means there is a lot of debate. And Sir has means very, uh, means uh, given a lot of his thoughts and his observations about uh, when plate tectonics have started and how they were operative in Archean with the specific to Indian cratons. Finally, he means with an overview on the evolution of the Indian cratons and also genetically linking the major cratons of India. I am sure everyone will agree with me that today's lecture is full of knowledge with many new thoughts. Sir, there are three to four active working groups in NGRI with focus on Arcan crustal growth. The ideas presented today will certainly provoke us to do better in coming years ahead. I thank Professor Singhvi, uh, Professor Harshupta, Dimri Sir, RN Singh for attending today's lecture. All scientists and research scholars are thanked for attending the sixth time on Jubilee lecture through virtual media across the globe. Thanks one and all. Thank you very much. There was, it, it's good that there was no power cut and there was no internet cut during your Fortunately, fortunately, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> webmaster, webmaster, we can, we can uh, stop the live uh, telecast now. It is very good to see you, Professor Sharma, Ashok Singh, here. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Very nice to see you here. <laughs>